Hey, good morning, everyone. Me, Yuri. Hope you had a good morning. Let me know if you can hear me well, see me well, if everything is working properly. And let's start doing the code. You can hear me well. Last two times we had the audio broken and then the video broken. I'm just hoping it's going to be all right this time. I'm also kind of curious where you're from, like where you're watching me from. So I'd appreciate if you would share your location. Like I see some guys are watching from Greece, from Kiev. That's where I am from. I'm just waiting for some kind of okay. Yeah. Is everything okay? Oh yeah. So you can probably hear me if you're answering the question, right? <laughs> so it's all good. The sound quality, the video quality, everything's great, right? I just need this. I just need to know. You know? I just need to know. Loud and clear. Thanks. Alrighty, so let's get started. So I've recently been creating a lot of GIFs. Uh, just a short disclaimer, I'm not feeling real good today, physically, I guess. And yeah, anyway, so I've been creating lots of GIFs recently. Like this one is a Bees and Bombs replica, if you follow him. This is just some other classical GIFs. And one of the GIFs was this one, like the tunnel, which is a bit mm, twisted, I guess. And it's kind of simple, and I decided that why not go with a, this simple, infinitely looped GIF. Or maybe you prefer GIF to, for today. There are a bunch of other GIFs. If you want, you can just follow me on Instagram. I don't really post a lot. Maybe just some stories, some posts from 2019, I guess. Show the screen, all right, show the screen, show the screen, yeah. So I've been, uh, I've been speaking of the GIFs that I've been creating recently. And yeah, there are some of them, you can follow me on Instagram, I've also posted them to the Facebook and sometimes to Twitter, if they are original ones, because most of them is just, I'm just trying to replicate something that I've seen somewhere. Not copying the code, but just training myself. So there you can recognize some of the GIFs I did on the stream. And well, some whatever. This is from the stream. Um, I, I, I've been trying to create this one today. <laughs> and some kind on of TV morning. Okay, yeah. And this one is a rain marching. And there's a bunch of interesting gifts. You can follow me on Insta if you would like to see more. This is a bees and bombs replica. And yeah. That's it. So I'm going to try to recreate this one today and show you how it's easy to create this one and how you can be creative, you know, not spending too much time on this, but really starting from scratch, writing a bunch of lines of code. And then here you go. You can arrive at this. All right. So let's get started. To do this, I will create, and this is my Insta, if you want to follow those kind of stories. And yeah i'm gonna be doing this with a canvas sketch done by matt deloria i'm gonna create some folder here which is gonna be a tunnel tunnel all right and i'll go to the straight to the straight to the repo repo of the canvas sketch and then there's some you know some comments you can try and this is one particular one i'm interested in is creating a new 3js template which means you don't even need to write you don't even need to save some template or something like that you can just run the comment and there you go so let's try to do this i'm gonna go to tunnel i'm gonna do this canvas sketch canvas sketch new template 3 and open which means it's gonna be opening a new browser window Pretty soon, hopefully. Hey, Fabio. 
yeah and here you go with just one simple command you can get already a free js working template which is ready to i don't know to write a code and to do demos and it's already have a bunch of um, functionality built in because you can save the gifs or maybe gifs whatever you prefer and then yeah maybe video okay so i need to open the chat window so i can see your messages on my other screen and then okay so first of all i kind of want to set the dimensions for this one and the animation let's let's try to see what what, what actually been created after this comment so it's created the folder sketch so it's also created it also created the package json file with a bunch of dependencies 3js obviously and the kind of sketch okay and then the sketch itself is a two kilobyte file let's open it it's actually pretty small 70 lines of count and it's just a basic 3js scene so we're just adding some mesh gonna make it bigger just setting some lightning for the mesh and well that's it i don't think i will need lighting this time so i'm gonna just create the mesh uh, normal material maybe like this so i even have less code than i used to maybe i make it something like this yeah, so now we have the basic cube, which is almost like the basic 3JS 3JS scene from the 3JS library itself. I mean, they have a basic scene and a rep, basic example. Yeah. So how do we go about creating the infinite tunnel? Okay. So first of all, my animation is now infinite. I kind of don't want to... <laughs> you know the thing is if you want to create an infinite animation you don't really need it to be infinite you need to make it finite animation and then loop it because there's nothing infinite in the world right <laughs> why i'm writing finite here so i think i need to set the duration for this one uh, like four seconds maybe and then uh, what else i uh, have to set the dimensions i think that's like this probably don't quite remember the exact api let's try this yeah that's right yep so now we have the you know this size is actually for instagram stories for the iphone so when you post something to the facebook this is actually the size you need to save the video or the gif all righty here we are all right so now we have the code now we have it visualized on the right side of the screen and well let's start so what is the tunnel essentially it's some i don't know kind of a box kind of a long really long box not really a box usually but yeah the box is also a tunnel right so i'll start with creating the or maybe it's it's not in the really box it maybe it's a it's a cylinder right so i'm gonna start with a cylinder uh three js let's start with it yeah it's pretty easy to create cylinder geometry and so i'm gonna just replace the box geometry right here with the cylinder geometry i think the first two are the radius the bottom and the top radius then we have the number of the segments let's set it to four and then what's that it's radial segments and that height segments okay i don't really need height segments for now but okay let that be 32. and we have a we have a cylinder but that's not good and i kind of need to put the camera inside of the cylinder and look at like the long part of the cylinder so for this to happen i think i'll do uh, this first and then i think i'll need to rotate my mesh oh which axis that's a good question which i don't know the answer to 
yeah, this is the correct, I think. I think I need, I also need to say, to set the double site. Yeah, now we're inside the uh, cylinder. I can make it really big. And we're kind of looking at the end of the long tunnel, right? And we can fly in the tunnel and it's all good. Uh, I think that wasn't the side of the tunnel, actually. What's the radius and the size of the tunnel? It's radius. Okay, this was the last parameter actually was the height of the cylinder. Oh no. It's radius, radius, and then the height, and then segments. Okay, this is the height, and this is the segments. 32 is too many. Let's set four, and we're gonna get the box kind of square cylinder. I don't know. So it means that it's the number of the detailization on the circle that you get. So if I set it like to eight, I'm gonna get eight vertices and so forth. So it's all good and easy so far, right? We just I didn't even write a single line of code actually. Well I just added the site double site, maybe some rotation, but you know that's it. Anyone can do that. I just hope that this stream will inspire you to do something 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 simple. Alright. Okay. So it actually doesn't do a good job in creating what I wanna create because if you look closer to this one, uh, where is it? Yeah, here is it. It's kind of, um, it, it has a weird shape. And I don't know, maybe maybe you can use some JLSL to recreate this shape, but I would like more flexibility for this one, I'm not putting too much on the JLSL this time. So I remember that I had another API in the 3.js to create some weird shapes. And this is API called extrude geometry so let's go to extrude buffer geometry and this is how you create you just extrude some some shape so let's just copy paste everything from the 3.js website not really creative stream right so this these are the coordinates of the shape i'm gonna change them in a minute so right now i'm just copy pasting the codes pretty easy and then creating the geometry yeah just replace this geometry with this i should maybe put camera a bit further so we would see the shape and uh, what uh, was a mistake again 61 yeah because i put the wrong symbol here okay still something is wrong width is not defined all right obviously i'll set something here like uh, 0 0.5 0 0.5 and then 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 so i'm going to draw the square manually here so um and then back back to the first one yeah so now I kind of build the shape it has this weird bevel I don't really need it so I will just set the bevel enabled false and I remove all the other parameters so now I have the same thing it's like exactly the same kind of cylinder but but it's different because now it's kind of parametrical so in, in here, we're actually drawing in two dimensions. So we're creating this shape just like we would create one in the canvas 2D. We're just setting the points in two dimensions and then two dimensions and then 3GS just extends this shape into the 3D. So uh, I'm gonna move my camera back inside of the shape. I think I will need to remove this rotation again. And I'm kind of uh, watching, I'm inside the shape now, but it's being rotated because I have this rotation inside the render function. All right, I think I will, I, I will also need to move this mesh a bit behind the camera, so the camera is actually inside the mesh. And just move it minus one. Yeah, so now we are back inside of the, um, back to the tunnel. 
So we're in tunnel, but now this tunnel is much better than it used to be before because we can control it with the parameters. So before we proceed, let's add shader material here. So instead of using the mesh normal material, I'm going to use mesh shader material. Okay, I'll leave it double side. I need to use fragment shader, which is going to be some non-existent fragment parameter. And then I use, need to use vertex shader, which is going to be some non-existent vertex parameter. And then I need to set uniforms, which is going to be the object containing some parameters. Well, something like time, which is of type float and the value zero and then the playhead. I think, each, I think the canvas sketch has this playhead parameter built in here. And well, it doesn't really work because I don't have the fragment and vertex shaders yet. So I think I will just copy paste them from my usual template. It's not really rocket science. I'll create the shader folder here. I've been just decompiling and practicing and making a lot of mistakes. That's how you learn. I don't think there's any other way to learn. It's like when you experience pain, that's when you learn. There's no painless way to do that, I think. All right, I uh, just added the fragment and vertex. I need to include them now. So I need to fragment. Mm. What? Shader, fragment, JLSL, and the same goes for the vertex. Uh, what? Uh, why? From? Yeah. Okay, there's still something wrong with it. Mesh shader material. Yeah, I think it's just shader material. No mesh is in there. Yeah, so now we have this uh, box lighted by some something weird because I, I think I have a kind of need to put these files back in the editor too. So now I have the fragment shader and the vertex shader here in editor too. Maybe I'll, I can make the text a bit bigger. I don't know. You can also set the quality of the video below, like below me. We are building the infinite GIF today with the tunnel. We are flying in the tunnel and building an infinite GIF. All right. So let's go on. So now we have this infinite tunnel. I'm showing VUV, I can show something yellow. It's gonna be all yellow. So for now I'm just showing the UVs. Not a big deal. So let's try to colorize it so it looks fun. I will take those two colors that I used in, the, in that GIF. I need to switch to the decimal. Yep. Yeah, so the first color is this. And the second color should be the blue one. Yeah, right. So if I now set the color one, we should just see one of the colors. And the color two is the other color. Okay. Works great. So I would like to make some stripes now because obviously it was all about the stripes. Yeah. All right. So let's try to create these stripes. I think I well to create the stripes I will introduce a new parameter. I'll call it the uh, okay something like. And then it's going to be just the sign function taken from the PUV v x multiplied by something, let's say six for now. And let's multiply it also by P number. Okay. 
And let's visualize that. What? Didn't want that. So now we have those stripes, but in the wrong axis. So I need to I need to take the sign from the Y component of the VUV. Now it's a good kind of good, but it's not the the stripes are not really, you know, not smooth enough, not crisp enough. And to make them crisp, I, I, I could actually use some step function, but that wouldn't make it very crisp. You know, to make something crisp, you need to use some smooth in there. And well, usually one would make that with a smooth function, like the smooth step function, which is built in into the GLSL. But I will, some time ago, I, I I stumbled upon the implementation where you can build something like smooth step, but actually, actually with, with your own hands m m manually. So I will build these two here right now. So first of all, I would need to take the absolute number, like float f line absolute. It's gonna be just the absolute from the f line. So it's just an absolute of the sign function. Then I would need to like I can do this if f line uh, is below the zero because the sign function goes from minus one to one. Let's say I have some parameter k equals zero. Then k equals uh, minus one. Else k equals one and we can try and visualize this k parameter it would actually look kind of crisp but it's not really crisp well maybe it's enough for this particular situation actually but once we're gonna get the twisted edges it's not gonna be enough believe me so i'm gonna go ahead and create this thing first for you so then i would need to do a bit of a math right now because um like I need to build some threshold. So the thing is, right now is there's only black and white pixels, and it's not really smooth transition between the black and white colors. Because to make a smooth transition, we need to build um, like something in between. Like it's not just black and white, but black and white and gray in between the black and white. Then it looks good for the eyes. Okay. Uh, actually, I think I could visualize this bug by just adding UVX here. Yeah, and you can see these weird edges doesn't look good at all. So let's try to remove them. I'll remove this for now. Um, I'm gonna build some threshold value. Just gonna be something really small, like maybe this. And then, if the f line f, f line value is below this um, threshold. I'm gonna do something weird. So this is when the F line is below this threshold, it means we're on the edge. It's we're on the edge where the black and white like, changes into one another. So F line uh, A below the threshold. And in between, like when it's below the threshold, I wanna make this smooth transition between minus one and one. So I wanna set some K value like it's changing between minus one and one smoothly. And for this, I will use the mm, uh, linear interpolation in this one. And well, let me show you what I'm gonna be doing right now. So there's Desmos. Let's first see how the sign looks. So this is how the sign looks, no surprise. I hope so. So this is the absolute of the sign. It just goes the same, but on the upper part of the coordinate system. And this is the key parameter, which is set here. I can just uh, make it the sign divided by the absolute of the sign. So it's, it's, it's showed in green. It's just, it's just either minus one or one. And I don't like it because I, I need to put something in here like i need to do some mm, in this range i can 
make it a linear interpolated between minus one and one. And for this, I'm comparing the f line value, which is this blue function, f line absolute value, when it's below the threshold, which means it's kind of here. That's when I need to set k to something else. So first of all, I'm gonna uh, let's make some special k, which is gonna be zero by default, and I'll set this sk. I'll just divide the. Um, I want to just see how much we are, how far we are from the zero axis. So sk is gonna be the threshold minus uh, the this f line a. It's actually a typo. Divided by a threshold. So this means it's gonna change from one to zero right here. So it's this part, only right part for now. I mean, we actually have have both of those parts, but uh, it's just that this changes from one to zero, and this changes from one to zero. And now we have to just linear interpolate, knowing these values, we have to linear interpolate. For this, we just set the key to... Uh, we're gonna interpolate between uh, known key, known key, key value, uh, which is key multiplied by one minus minus sk, and uh, the current f line f line a value, so f line a multiplied by sk. Yeah, I think that's it. So right now we're gonna just build this line. Like uh, I don't know how to draw here. We're building this kind of line. What? Like this kind of line, because this is where we. This is the value where the threshold is small, like here, and this is where we compare with the threshold. It's too many lines, right? <laughs> yeah. But still, this is what we are essentially doing. It's either it's either minus one or one, and then linear interpolate into one another. So right now, key value is changing between minus one and one. I want it to be normalized between one, zero and one. So I want it to be uh, key plus one and divided by two. I'm gonna move it back to the zero to one range. And now, well, nothing should be changing really. But now we're gonna have it smooth lines. I can add something small here. Yeah, it's kind of still an edge, but you have you have to see this smooth edge because well, at least it's smoother. Maybe we should move the yeah, we can sm make it more smooth, changing this value. You can see it's starting to look cool already. I don't read this so far. Um, yep. Okay. Now I kind of want to introduce my new colors. So I will set the final color to the mix between those two colors that I already set from my GIF. And I'll mix them with the K value and just set the color here. And let's see. I'm going to see just those two colors on the screen. Well, the back of the thing doesn't look good, right? You can see that this anti-aliasing is not doing a good job there and that's why I kind of want to make the first the tunnel much bigger it goes like almost forever and then I want to introduce some kind of fog here fog of war not really fog of war but still so I'll just calculate some parameter fog which is going to be something between 0 and 1 Right? Yeah. And for this, I will use smooth step function, which just returns me 0 or 1. I will use uh, maybe not even smooth step. I think I'm going to make it linear. So I need the position in my shader. I have this varying V position. And then the position I'm gonna set the position equals position 
en i'll set the fog equal to we equal the position divided by say 10 so this value when the z when the z coordinate of the position grows this value would grow also but to make it in a 0 1 range let's clamp it let's clamp it and well then i need to see this value fog i can actually just see the fog like this yeah it starts to get brighter when it goes further but it's not what i want i want it the other way you know it looks much better kind of cool in itself it's like an ambient occlusion here on the edge okay and then i kind of want to change this final color and mix it with a black itself and then the fog yeah so now we have it going it's like fading into, to, in, into, into the black when it goes further and you can change this parameter to fade it faster slower depending on what you're trying to achieve here all right i think like 12 should be good all righty so now let's try to make something animated so i want to introduce the playhead here and both here and i think i can just move the mesh towards the camera mesh position z equals minus one plus uh, playhead multiplied by say six so it's going the other way this way should be good now you can see that the the further we go because uh, the hmm, the lightness of the tunnel depends on the on the position parameter the darker it gets so it's not really looped and to make it loop properly i'm moving six units i'm moving my mesh six units the whole animation so that means that right here when i calculate the fog instead of using v position i could just subtract playhead multiplied by six two and now it should be forever i'm not setting the playhead uniform yet that's the reason so mesh position no material uniforms playhead yeah now it's i think it's looped i can see the the end or the beginning of this gif just four seconds we already spent like 12 looking at that all right so we're getting there it's not yet what i'm heading what i'm what i wanted to but we're getting there all right so now it's looped gif it's infinite even though it's just four seconds long but it's infinite and then what's next what do you think is next what are your ideas so i actually want to make this curve more parametric and then let's say i have some detailization kind of n which is equal to 10 and then i could just do a loop like this i think i need to go so i'll calculate the theta 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 angle which is gonna be math multiplied by i divided by n so it goes from zero to two piece and then i can do the mm, shape line too i'll calculate the x it's gonna be the uh, math sine theta and then the y as cosine theta and then i want it to be x and and y and not yet there because I think I need to comment this. Mm, 
think I'll need to leave the move to in place. Something is not right. But what's that? Maybe I should close the shape. I should. Okay. It's not that. So this is changing between zero and sine, cosine, shape line two. Oh yeah. Why doesn't show me any mistakes like the math pie is undefined or something like that? Yeah, so now we have the what do we say? Ten kind of circle polygon. And it's good. It's, it looks good. So maybe I would add something here because it's too dark. I think I should subtract to make it lighter. So it goes to black, but it just just a wee bit further in the distance. All right. Now looking good, but now we can do like any kind of shapes because it's you know it's just parametrical shape, so you can do any kind of shape. And that's when I learned that you can actually there's a, just such a shape called squircle. Squircle, I don't know. And this is really important, guys, right here not to miss the letter because if you google the squircle that's actually the other thing it's like when she's about to squirt and you stick a pop cycle up her okay why not but you know such a huge difference in just one letter all right so today we're gonna be just for today we're gonna be talking about the squir squircle and squircle is a mm, shape where you have a kind of rounded shape rounded rectangle right and that's the formula for the squircle actually and it's quite easy to replicate this one so actually the only thing they would need to change here is to calculate the radius so for now the radius is just one and i'm multiplying this with the radius but to, to make an easy squircle formula i think i had it somewhere yeah that's math probably yeah, there should be some kind of you can build like beautiful kind of shapes with this <laughs> and there should be some kind of formula yeah here is it so you, you, the only thing you change is actually you calculate the radius depending on the angle like depending on this t t t an an angle tether you calculate the radius so let's try to do this so right here it's one plus uh, this is one eight multiplied by sine squared this must sine 2 multiplied by uh, multiplied by theta right and it should be squared and let's see what kind of shape we would get with this uh, not getting anything good because because why maybe I should make it smaller maybe I should make the digitalization bigger like 100 yeah we're getting there so now we see some kind of shape but it's not yet there I think I have to make the radius the initial ones smaller so we're starting to get some cool cool results it's not yet what we want Maybe this math piece shouldn't be here anyway. Yeah. Because right now we, I think we went, it's like it's been overlapped by itself. Okay, so right now it's going too fast. Let's make it a bit slower, just make it long. So it's starting to look cool, right? I think you can play with this, with, with, with the radius thin and make it like. I don't know. Make it a bit more like, you know, curved like this maybe. Uh, I think this was one this was the best. Nah, this is the best. Okay. 
So now we have this weird shape, we're almost there, now we have to also twist it. And how do you go about twisting something? Rotate JLSL. Twisting is just about rotation. So I'll just copy paste the matrix to make a rotation. Well, someday I will just learn that by heart because it's not really a complicated thing to learn. And all the cool guys know how to do this, but not me, not yet, at least. I would also mess, I would always mess this signs or something like this. So I'm going to introduce a new, new pos variable and then I need to change this new pos. I don't know, just to twist something, I would just change the two dimensional part of this vector. And for this I would just make a rotation and then the first one is a vector and the second one is an angle. And the first vector is going to be uh, well the same one. And the angle is gonna be, I don't know, let's set it something small so we just see the rotation. It doesn't do any good because we have some error somewhere. Undeclared identifier, well, yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's actually being twisted right now. Add just a little bit, twist it more, yeah. So it's actually working good, we're twisting it. You can actually try to twist it, like I don't know, mess up all, all the coordinate system and it's gonna do something weird. Well, sometimes it's gonna be cool, sometimes not. Right now it's just rotating the shape in two dimensions. Yeah, I lost it. Okay, anyway, in this particular situation on the rotation on those axes makes sense. I kinda wanna make it parametric depending on the how far we are in the shape. And this means that I can use the position parameter again. In particular, Z coordinate of this parameter. It's breaking something down, but probably because... Let's see how the shape look like. looks like. I mean, in how many points in space we actually have there. Well, not much. You can see that all, 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 all the like we just have long triangles, really long triangles. To change that, I think we have to change the depth parameter. Yeah, now we have a lot more triangles. It already looks kind of cool, even uh, even with the wireframe kind of view. And well, well, still something is wrong. I think I want to make the detailization a lot better. Still have something wrong in there. Which is what exactly? Now we have this beautiful shape, striped. But something is wrong. I think this is the beginning of the. This is the first. Uh, where is it? Where's my shape? This is the shape move to, which I'm missing. And it's gonna go to 0 0.2, 0, I guess. No, maybe the other way around. No, it's not that. No, it's move to, it shouldn't be line to. I have to start somewhere when I'm drawing the shape. And I think it was messed up because I started at some, I don't know, random location. So I think it's too twisted with this kind of twisting. Make it less twisted. And well, here we go. We actually I think we just arrived at the destination. Hey, you know, we kind of used some math, but mostly we just copy pasted everything. And then, like, of course, I did those shape, those stripes, I mean, with a bit of a math interpolation, but you could always do something else. I don't know. You could just draw some pattern here, you can just do some kinetic typography, you can put some letters there, it will look cool. You can also do, I don't know, you can... <laughs> Where's the shape? Where's the shape part? The number of points, like this, the N. You mean like it's either four or, or more than that? Well, the thing is, I can't change really. This is geometry being created in the start. And then maybe I could multiply this by two. 
we would get more of those waves. Maybe I could divide it by two and we'll get something different here. And it kind of looks cool, right? Yeah, and it's going infinitely because, because it's all looped. I think I don't yet have a perfect loop because of the angle, but it's just, just a matter of a bit of a math to figure out that. And then, well, that's it. That's cool. I kind of also wanted to put some shape in the end. So like a bonus content, I'm going to just create the, uh, my usual template. It's called parcel. I'll use the uh, boom, 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 uh, what I use, 3GS start. Because I, 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 I couldn't figure out how to add the objects into the, um, into the that animation, but I think we can do this really fast. So it's like five or six minutes until I, I kind of want to see how the object would add something to this scene. Okay, let's start another one. And then you know what's good about the kind of sketch while I'm starting the template is I, I could actually press the command shift S on the Mac. And then it would save the frames for me. And then you can do anything with those frames, like the video or anything. It's not that hard to do that yourself, actually, save all those frames. But anyway, it's kind of good to have them built in. And you can make the GIF and you can post it to your Instagram. You can surprise everyone. Yeah, now I have 2,040 frames in high quality. And then you can just do whatever you want with them. Uh, okay. So now I probably have what? This is something new. Oh yeah, because I've added something to the template. Okay, so let's like really stress up programming. I'm gonna try to do this real fast. Uh, have some weird things added here. Don't think I need them. It's all good. Yeah, now we have the 3D shape. Now I just add um, the thing that I created here to my 3D shape, like this, it's a mesh. So I'll just move it to my usual template. Add objects, add objects, add objects, it's right here. I'll just create things in the context. Don't need to create the scene. I still need to create the material for this one. Maybe even not because I, I, I'm creating it right here in the mesh. Okay. It's all good so far. Something is wrong. Uniforms are undefined. Yeah, I don't have this. Where is that? Oh, it's in the resize function. I also have a lot of going on there, which I don't really need at all. Yeah, so now we have the shape. It actually looks kind of cool, like a glowing effect, because I'm just showing my UVs. And then, mm, 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 also need to set this. Uh, one something small and it runs from zero to one so I have this same playhead here like this yeah we're moving now I 
also need to position the camera just like I had it in my so it's going the other way yeah and why does it go the other way like what I had with the camera and the one before I had the camera Where's my camera? Minus one, I had it in minus one. Yeah, right. This looks good. Now I have to put my stripes back. For that I will just copy paste the shader folder here and just replace it. So now we have it. Now I have to set the uniforms also this mesh material uniforms playhead value so there we go we can control the speed like this that's all good now and I want to uh, load the object file so I have this amazing fox here I'm gonna try to load it Loader. I could actually colorize it as the same as I did with the option op I set. And here I can add the have to put the fox inside my folder somewhere here and import it now I have the fox now I can just do this and then the callback function when it loaded and here I can just see scene at uh, What? Do not find Fox because I probably need to go one folder up. Yeah, okay, the Fox is here, but it's too damn big. So I need to scale it a bit. Well, we're getting there. Uh, position z equals minus three maybe no the other way yeah so now we have the fox maybe even smaller even smaller than that it's kind of a big fox the fox is inside maybe I should make it closer okay I'm moving the mesh For some reason it's getting darker anyway but um, okay yeah just that the fox had a big big tail and I couldn't see the fox because of the tail rotation Z okay it's not this way here we are What? Let's see what the option is about. And this is a group, okay. And I can't really. It consists of three meshes. What? The fox? There are actually three foxes. 
yeah yeah we're moving into the fog yeah that's right but i was trying to first see the fox before i would fix anything else um boom 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 boom, boom. why let's just do this This is a function to loop through the object. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Travers and then Travers and then child. Maybe just like this. Yeah, now we have all those meshes. Now we can do this if, like if child instance of the object 3D. Yes, now we see the fox with the normal material, which is not that good. Now I want this material to be okay. This now works good, and now I want. To see the fox with this material. I don't know what I'm gonna get. I haven't tried it myself. Yeah, but because I'm also rotating in that material, I wouldn't actually get the um, the striped fox, right? So I guess we should just mesh. I don't know. Mesh normal material is, is good enough. Okay, so this whole thing with the fox didn't work out. So I'm gonna just use the fox here. It's kind of the fo fox model is actually too small because the tunnel is too small. So maybe I should change the <laughs> the camera fob as well. Like it's seventy already, maybe like this. Yeah, it's actually much better. Now you can see the fox. Well, maybe I could make it a wireframe. It's gonna be looking cool, at least cooler than what we have right now. So it's just creative process right now. I don't know what I'm doing. So this is now the fox being in the end of the tunnel. Maybe move it a bit further. Hmm. Not to do this. For some reason, the the fog is not being calculated correctly here because probably something is wrong with this the playhead. But I'm setting the kind of setting the playhead here in the render function. Mesh material uniforms playhead. Oh yeah. It's not this playhead actually, this this is what, what was wrong. Not gonna be just just like there, infinite. Well I just leave it at that probably because Yeah, maybe just set the color. I'll just set the color to the mm, So this color, and that's it. <laughs> or maybe the other. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should play a bit with that, maybe make a striped fox or something like that. Yeah, we just spent 10 minutes doing that. Doesn't really matter. Yeah. All right. So let's get back to what we actually created. Let's sum it up. We actually did a pretty 
nice infinite tunnel and you can try to do this yourself and for that we, what we did we just built the extrude geometry then we set some stripes with a fragment shader and then we just parameterize parameterize um, we just make the uh, whole shape parametric with this function called squircle and that's it it looks it actually looks cool even from the outside from the inside it looks even cooler it's like you go into the infinite tunnel and it's been rotated and you can add some more rotation some more parametric twisting and that's it hope you had some great time it's been hard to me to stream today but yeah i really appreciate your support guys if you're still watching my stream you can support me on the patreon if you want and yeah i will see you in a week i wish you a good day call your parents call your closest one say them something good and have a good day be happy guys let me know if what you think about this